Hello, how are you? Good. Need a tour? I would love to have a tour. Okay. Can you give me one? Sure, I can give you a tour. Do you mind if I film you too? Oh, no, not at okay. all. Okay. I'm actually a writer. Are you? And I write fantasy, and so I kind of stay within this realm, medieval realm. Oh, okay. So any information you can give me would be great. Sure, not so. a problem. Okay. Um, the Nina and Pinta are two mm -hmm. of Columbus's ships. Okay. And he sailed on back in 1492. Okay. Um, the Nina behind us here is 65 feet long. Okay. The Pinta was 85 feet long. Okay. Uh, the Nina is a one-on-one -on -one scaled replica. Mm -hmm. The Pinta here is uh, larger by 50 percent. Okay. Um, she was originally made for touring in the Cayman Islands. Oh. Uh, to do parties and things like that. Okay. Um, and the Nina's been touring since 1992. Okay. Um, and they've been doing so well with her by herself, they thought mm -hmm. that, well, let's bring the Pinta along and see if mm -hmm. it would it would really be beneficial to have both ships together. Mm -hmm. And it has. Okay. She's been touring with the Nina since 2006. Great. Um, there were 24 men aboard the Nina, 29 mm -hmm. aboard the Pinta. Mm -hmm. All of the men were between the ages of 14 and 19 years old. Okay. Uh, back in those days, the life expectancy of a male was only 30 to 35. So 14 to 19, they were considered men back then. Okay. Um, all of the men who were on deck and part of the crew all mm -hmm. lived on deck. Mm -hmm. There was no room for them underneath, below deck. So they slept here? They slept right here on deck, yes. Wow. Um, below deck was held for all of the livestock okay. and all of their uh, supplies and food. Okay. They did have livestock. Yes. There were um, horses and chickens and pigs and goats, rabbits, things of that nature. Were they on top or underneath? Uh, they were underneath. Uh, down here. They so were they down would, here. So they would be underneath here yes. in this area. And the larger animals would be held on in harnesses. Um, the horses especially um, were held in the harnesses for the entire voyage. Their, their legs never touched the floor oh. for fear that the rocking of the ship would break a leg and they would have to put them down. Right. So once they got to the new world, uh, they took the horses off the land off to the land, nursed them back to health, got their legs back, their strength back in their legs, and they were able to use them for transportation on the island. Um, one of the devices that they used in order to get the animals on and off the ship was a windlass, and that's at the front of the ship. It's a winch device that was used. Um, it went all the way up to the, the top of the mast, mm -hmm. came across and down here in the center mast, mm -hmm. and that's how they would take the animals on and off the ship and any supplies, barrels, or whatever. Yes, the heavier things, yes. Um, the water supply, they brought water with them, and as they needed water, they would use rainwater and put it in the barrels for their drinking water. Um, but like everything else in a barrel, it got very algae and stagnant, and it really wasn't very good tasting. So they took their water and they put their, their wine and added it to the water. Oh. Not only did it make the water sweeter to drink, but it... Kool-Aid. That's good. I like that. But it also took away all the bacteria. So unbeknownst to them, they were they were also doing something useful for themselves so they wouldn't get sick. Sure. Yeah. Amazing, huh? Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. What they would think. Um, everything on the ship that you see here is handcrafted, just as it would have been back in the 1400s. Mm -hmm. um, the wood that you're standing on is Oops. an African iron wood. Um, it's a very hard, hardy wood. It's very porous, though. Um, the men never needed to worry about scrubbing the decks daily because they were so far down in the water with the weight of the ship that the water was constantly splashing on board. Oh. So it, the, the deck remained wet at all times. Um, if you'll notice, our, the slits, yeah. mm -hmm. the water yeah. goes on and it goes right off. So they never held water. Yeah, the entire time. Yeah. What's the, oh my they use for fill oh. Hemp. Hemp. H E M P. Yes. They, yes, it did. But there was some uh, some other type of material, and please don't ask. I don't know the name of it. That they they used along with the hemp, so that it counteracted the, the contraction of it. But these are wooden dowels. Okay, great. There's no. You will not find any nails or screws. 
these ships. Uh, the only metal that you will see on these ships today are regulations uh, haunted by the Coast Guard that we have to comply with. But back in the day, it would all be wooden. Um, metal back in those days was very expensive, so they used wood whenever possible. Okay. Um, the reason why the ships are black and not brown, like most ships you see, um, Columbus did a lot of extensive research before his journey. Uh, one of the things that he was most afraid of was the wood deteriorating on his ships, uh, not knowing how long he was going to be gone. So he uh, found that uh, the sap of a pine tree was very water repellent. It's called pine tar today. And that's what the crewmen did day and night. They wow. lathered the entire ship with pine tar to make sure that the wood would not deteriorate due to the, uh, the ocean and the salt air. Wow. Mm, interesting. Yeah. So that's why the okay. ships are black. Okay. Um, up above, on the aft deck, is a sh uh, you see a boat up there? Uh -huh. It's not a lifeboat. There was no lifeboat on board. None of the men on board knew how to swim. Oh. There was no word in the Latin or Spanish language for swim. Oh. So that ship, that boat was put on board. It was left on the side, and the men would go on and off that boat in order to get to land. Oh wow. Right? Yes. And so they call the what? A it, it, no, it's just called a ship's boat. Just a ship's. A ship's boat. Yes. Okay. Uh, Columbus wrote in one of his journals that um, he was amazed at how the natives of the New World floated on the water. Can you floated, not swam. And I'm sure that those people taught the people here on the crew how to swim eventually. But yeah, for that for that particular moment, he he had no word for it. Yeah. The box that's underneath of the, the, the ship's boat there was called the coffin. Uh oh. Um, and that was another word that was widely used for for boxes of that nature. It was the driest part of the ship, and. Inside of there were Columbus's maps, his journals, um, gunpowder, which needed to be kept dry, um, a few muskets that they had on board that they brought for um, hunting purposes, um, and any treasures that he had found. Um, no crew member was allowed up there. Um, Columbus was afraid they were going to take it and run. I don't know where they were going to run to in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> You know, what the heck, you know, so... Take the boat down and go. Take the boat go. down and go, exactly. Um, the raised aft deck is also called the poop deck. And for those of you that don't know what the poop deck is, um, there was a priest on board every ship. And he carried a very high command aboard each ship. He was next to the captain in line of command. Um, twice a day he had mass up on the, the raised aft deck and he would say mass to the masses out here on deck. Each man when he came aboard brought a small statue with him. Saints, good luck charms, whatever they had. Uh, they were called pupas in the Latin language and that's how the poop deck got its name. They used to hang them from the, the railing of the deck and that's how it became the poop deck. Uh, back here is where they used to steer the ship. There were no steering wheels or ship's wheel back then. They would not have been invented for another hundred years. Ooh. So what was used was a tiller, and that was attached to the rudder, and that's how they sailed. So if you want to come back yeah. here, I'll show you the tiller. Oh my goodness. Wow. This large piece of wood here oh. is called the tiller, and that's attached to our rudder, which goes down seven feet in Wow. Um, it looks very ominous, but it is very easy to steer. This little young man right here behind you could do it himself. <laughs> um, there would be spotters on each side of the bow in the front of the ship to uh, alert the helmsman of any obstacles in the ship's way. And we do that as well today, or we have someone on the aft deck to, to tell us if there's anything in our way coming. Because when you're navigating, and behind you there, sir, is the, our compass, uh, you can't see the front of the ship. You can't see anything in front of you. So we need someone to, to tell us which way to go. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
they might, would have had a much more primitive compass system than what we have here today. It probably would have been more like a sundial or something, but that was the way they navigated as well. So you guys actually navigate that way when you're going down the river? Somebody is sitting here? Yes. Well, pushing. today we have a pulley system mm -hmm. that we can attach to the, the, the tiller, mm -hmm. and it goes up, and we can actually steer the ship from up top. Okay. Oh. That yeah, but they didn't have that in those that days. That would be, still be scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that's pretty much it for the Pinta. Um, that's fascinating. There's a lot more of information that you can get over on the Nina okay. from them. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions or anything? Mm -mm. Well, no black covering on the wood. Is it a paint or a what? Oh, she told us that. Oh, yeah. Well, I wasn't there. That's all right. That's okay. It's called pine tar. It's a sample of a pine tree. It's very repellent to water. And the crew members, that's what they did day and night. They just lathered the whole deck of the ship with this pine tar to repel the ocean air and the ocean water so that the wood would not rot. Wow. What Thank kind you. of uh, speed would they get out of it? Was under normal <laughs> Andy, do you know what kind of speed they would get under sail? What did he say? Eight miles an hour. Eight miles an hour. Oh, no. We have two diesel engines on this ship. Mm -hmm. um, we only sail maybe 25 percent of the time now. Okay. Uh, we can't sail at all in the rivers. The channels are too uh, too narrow. Right. Um, but when we can sail, like on the lakes or mm -hmm. the ocean, we do. Wow. But it's not enough. Here to death. Yeah. Oh no, it's no. <laughs> really, honestly, I've never been on a sailboat in my life, and I feel totally safe here. Do you? Yes. What about storms? Have you ran into any? Storms? No, we don't. No. We don't travel in those. No. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, not unless we have to. Yeah. How many on the crew then and now? Then 29. Now 10. And how sick did they get? I mean, you know, they're laying on this flat floor. I'm sure they had to. None of them oh. had ever been in the water before. Really? You know, I mean, and they were young boys. So I'm sure many of them got sick. We are required to take motion sickness medication oh, yeah. before we sail. Um, if you still get sick, you're fine. If you, know, if you don't take it and you get sick, you're asked to leave at the next port. How are wow. you? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's not tolerated. Wow. Unless, you know, like I say, you take something and you still get sick, then, you know, at least you took it. Exactly. You know, mm -hmm. but if you refuse to take it and get sick, bye-bye. Wow. Wow. Yeah, well, we need everyone on deck. Sure. Right. Sure. You know, we wow. only have a, a small crew, so everyone has their jobs to do. So what's your job? Uh, I'm the cook on the, here on the Pinta, mm -hmm. and I am the uh, tour coordinator for mm -hmm. all the school tours okay, that and visit the ships in the different cities. And the, the kitchen is down there? Yes, it is. Yes. yes. Okay. This is a picture of it right here. Okay. This is a picture of the galley. Okay. And our... Uh, it looks pretty good course. size. Yeah. It is. It, it's, yeah. It's, it looks nice. It's probably the most spacious area on the ship. How yeah. long have you been on this ship? Seven weeks. Seven weeks. Um, and how long will you continue to be on it? I don't know. I've already extended myself a couple times. <laughs> wow. So we'll see. I just love it so much, you know. I'm always, I'm just afraid if I go home, I'm not going to have anything to do. <laughs> Basically. And most of the crew is on for how long? Or does it We're asked to, to when, you, when you join in, when you join in as a crew, you're asked for three to four weeks. And usually it's three weeks of training, and then the last week you're on your own to see, you know, how you do and how you perform and stuff. Um, if you make it that four weeks, you can pretty much stay as long as you want. We've been on the ship for over a year. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. So it just depends. So where are you from? I'm from Detroit. Oh, wow. Okay. Where do you so, go from here? Uh, we leave either Tuesday night or Wednesday for Grafton, Illinois, which is just north of St. Louis. Mm -hmm. And then from there, uh, we're meeting up at the Mississippi. And we're going to Memphis, Tennessee. And then um, from there, we're going to hook up with the Arkansas River. We have two dates in Arkansas and one date in Oklahoma this year. So we're going inland as far as Oklahoma this year.